You might remember that a few months ago I drove a prototype version of the upcoming Electric 5 series. Well, now I've come to sunny Lisbon to drive the full production version of the new BMW i5. As you might remember, I came away quite impressed by the dynamics of this car, but now we can see the exterior and the interior in full. Is this a future electric BMW to check out, or is it just another EV with a different body on top? That's what we're going to see in today's video. BMW has definitely toned down its design for the i5. If you think about cars like the iX or the i4, then it took a really distinctive line with those vehicles, whereas this new i5 seems to, well, it seems to be designed to appeal to more people. Up front, it's really recognisable as a 5 Series and as a BMW, but down the side, it's smoothed off and it's elongated, so it really does evoke that classic saloon shape. Around the back, what do you think? Well, I'm not completely sold on the rear end design of the new i5. I think it looks a little bit flat and a little bit fussy, but let me know what you think in the comments below. BMW has thrown some of its very latest tech at the interior of the new i5. Most of the multimedia functions are controlled via this main central curve display, which is running its latest software too. Plus, in a recent edit, it's got some new shortcut buttons which make navigating the menus a little bit quicker. There are some buttons down at the bottom which you can access those key functions that you want most of all. You can also play games, you can watch films when you're parked up and charging, so they've really pushed hard for the extra features that you'd want when you aren't fully driving the car. A bit like Tesla in truth. I also like the fact that they've hidden or semi-hidden the air vents down here and they're controlled via these touch panels at the bottom and that looks really smart. Again, I think there's just a little bit too much gloss plastic, but overall the fit and finish is just what you'd expect from BMW and it's completely vegan too. What's it like in the rear of the i5? Well, we've got plenty of knee room and leg room overall, though I'm finding the space for your feet a little bit tight. These seats are quite flat as well, but they're nicely comfortable and they've got plenty of support to them too. It's also worth mentioning that because the i5 or the 5 series is being offered with plug-in hybrid and petrol engines, it still has a transmission hump in the middle. So you don't get that completely flat floor as you would do on a full EV or a dedicated EV platform. But we've got lots of charging options. We've got USB-C charging ports in the middle and second ones up on the seat too. And I also like the fact that you've got a little screen for the heating and ventilation controls down the bottom. The i5 uh, that we're driving today is available in two flavors. You're gonna get the E-Drive 40 and then the car we're driving at the moment, the M60. We've been driving both cars out here in Portugal at the moment. And to be honest with you, I think you're best served with the regular version. It's a little bit more comfortable. The car that we're in today as an M Sport has M tuned adaptive suspension and compared to the regular version this one just feels a little bit firmer and a little more unsettled over poorer conditions you get some more performance of course and actually from takeaway this car is really quick but actually the regular version feels more than fast enough for daily driving and I think the bonuses that you get in terms of acceleration aren't counteracted by the drop-off in comfort it feels like it doesn't quite know what it wants to be in the M Sport. Is it comfortable or is it sporty? It doesn't seem to quite find the right line, whereas the regular E-Drive 40 version, well that's nice and comfy and that feels like a car you could drive all the time. Both cars have really nice steering. It's obviously not absolutely bristling with what journalists love to call feel, but actually it's nice and accurate. You're able to place the car really well. There are also some clever different driving modes on the i5 and you can switch between them via a button down below. It changes the sound of the car when you hit the accelerator. In efficient modes, it's a little bit quieter, and then in sportier modes, it is, as you might expect, a little bit louder and a little bit sportier. It's also worth mentioning that the more powerful M version uses a dual motor setup, whereas the E-Drive adopts a pretty conventional rear-wheel drive setup, as you expect to find in most BMWs. Personally, I've found that single rear motor to give the car a really nice sensation of, well, as you might expect, being rear driven and going around tighter corners, you get that nice little sensation of it being pushed round. It's nothing too crazy and it's definitely not Larry, but it makes it feel like a BMW and that's what you want, despite it being an electric car underneath. It's a whole new frontier, but somehow 
the regular version is channeling a little bit more of what you'd call BMW essence or character. I've got a nice low seating position in the i5 too, and that's something that I've always enjoyed in BMWs. In actual, the visibility is good too. These pillars are quite slim and the visibility at the back is excellent. The rear screen is quite large and it gives you a good view of the road behind you. So yes, if you do want the best possible performance and zero to 60 in around about four seconds, then this M Sport version is gonna be the one to go for. But I think for most driving, you're gonna want the best possible range and that comes in the regular E-Drive version. It doesn't look and it doesn't sound any different, obviously, but you're gonna to wanna to go further between trips to the plug and in that car, you're gonna be able to do that. Whereas this car knocks it off by about 30 to 40 miles. So it's not massive, but I do think that that extra range is always useful. And the regular version still feels more than quick enough. The regular E-Drive i5 will do zero to 60 miles an hour in around about 5.8 seconds. So it's by no means a slouch. As I mentioned, this one will do it in around about four. I still think away from the line, you're gonna be quicker than most things in the standard E-Drive. There always has to be an M Sport version, of course, it's BMW after all, and it'd be a bit weird if there wasn't one. But against the two, and having driven both here today, I think it's that standard version, which just feels a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more luxurious, and a little bit more like what you'd expect from a standard 5 Series. Plus, remember, of course, that there is a touring version coming along, both with petrol and with electric powertrains. And I think that's gonna be a pretty smart car, to be honest with you. It's worth mentioning as well, that the i5 and the 5 Series won't be offered with a diesel engine in this generation. You're only gonna be able to get it with petrol, plug-in hybrid, and electric setups. The good news is, is that BMW says that there's no trade-off with the plug-in hybrid, although let's be honest, BMW would say that. But I do think it's a bit of a shame that there isn't a nice, efficient diesel engine being offered with the 5 Series because that gives it that really long-legged ability, which is why people go for a large, reasonably executive saloon in the first place. This electric version though, most importantly, it does feel like a 5 Series, and that's something that I kind of thought when we drove it for its prototype drive. Seeing it here now in its fully production ready version, it seems like it's been carried through from that early prototype, and the dynamics that I really enjoyed when I first drove it are still there, so that's the most important thing really. I think the most important factor to think about with the new i5 is that it feels like a BMW and that's a hard thing to achieve when you're dealing with electric motors and a lack of sound which can sometimes dial away the character of a car. This M60 version is the one to go for if you want out and out power but in truth I think the regular E-Dynamics version is the one that I'd be leaning towards because it's got the best possible range and it's still more than quick enough. Overall, this is a very exciting car and one worth checking out. And remember, if you need a little bit more space, then the touring version is on its way soon. Thank you for watching this new car review on the BMW i5. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please leave us a like below and let us know in the comments section whether you drive an electric 5 series. And since you're here, please remember to subscribe to the motors.co.uk YouTube channel and just hit that bell icon and you'll get a notification each time we upload a new video.